Have you signed up for a triathlon with two separate transition areas? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you in detail how to set up your swim to bike transition and your bike to run transition when they're in two different locations so that you can feel organized and ready to race. Hey, it's Coach Eric here bringing you weekly training and racing tips, especially for the off-road triathlete. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Today we are talking about how to set up your transition areas, T1 and T2, when the race has them in two separate places. Now, while this isn't the normal for triathlon, it does happen, and in some big races, for example, in the Xterra Pan American Championships, you gotta go to two different places. I actually have a athlete who's doing the sprint distance uh, in Utah at that event, and as a beginner, she's stressed enough worrying about how to set up one transition area, let alone when it's in two different places. So after going over the, the details with her, it really helped reduce her stress, helped her feel more organized, and she feels a lot more confident uh, come race day. So I figured I'm gonna turn on the camera and I'm gonna share those with you right now. Okay, we are at Imaginary Transition and today we are number 412. So, the race is going to do a couple different things. When you get to a race like this, as you come into transition, you're going to see the different racks. This rack here says 400 to 420. And as you go along the racks, they're going to have different ranges of numbers labeled. So, you're going to walk down this aisle and find a spot that has an actual 412 designation and that's where you're going to set up your stuff. Now, some races don't have an exact spot in the row, but they may have the group 400 to 420. You would still go down that row, and then it might be first come, first serve in that specific row. So if that's the case, find the spot that's open. Uh, all I would say to that is be respectful of your fellow racers who got there before you. You don't want to have an experience like this uh, where your bike's just laying on top of uh, somebody else's. So the other thing they could do, but probably won't, is it might be a free-for-all for the entire transition area. So there won't be any labels anywhere. Just kind of find an open spot, and that's where you set up uh, your transition area. So those are three options. For the purpose of this, this is our rack, uh, and we're ready to set it up. As you approach transition, you're actually going to back your bike into the rack spot. Now, depending on how high your seat is, how high your wheels are, as you move it closer to the rack, you may actually have to tilt it on an angle to get it up underneath and then pull it up and over so you rest the nose of the bike on, on the rack. Now before we actually set up the transition area, where you've got your bike racked, you've got your water bottle, and you've got your flat repair kit on the back of your bike. Okay, so this is how it's typically going to look when you set it up. So, on the bottom here, you've got, I've got two towels. Now, a lot of people will just bring one larger towel and they'll kind of fold it up. That works fine. Over the years, I've learned I like two smaller towels so I can kind of shape them how I want. Um, additionally, if I come out of the water and it's more sand than I thought there'd be or rocks or pebbles or something that's I just want to wipe off, I can actually pick up one of the towels and, and wipe something off without pulling uh, the whole towel out and, and um, disrupting everything that I've got sitting down here. So. Just kind of a personal preference, but have a nice towel that you can uh, put your feet on and, and, and need if you, uh, it's there if you need it. The other thing you're gonna have here is a pair of shoes. So these are bike specific shoes. If you're gonna wear socks, you've got the socks in here slightly rolled down um, so you can get them on. Up here, we've got your bike helmet uh, with sunglasses, with the straps open uh, so it's easier to put on and the sunglasses inside. Uh, and then if you choose to, you've got gloves here on the handlebars and you're going to be facing uh, this way. So I got the right hand here and the left hand here, so it's easier to put on uh, when you're standing there. Now, while this is most likely uh, how you're going to have it, um, it does depend on what you decide to race in and what equipment you have. Uh, with this specifically, for example, sometimes the helmet won't stay on the handlebars. So what I'd recommend is just putting that either right on top of the shoes like that, or if there's enough space, you could put it right, right next to it. This is kind of a setup if you've got a tri-specific top, tri-specific bottoms, where you're gonna wear that top and bottom throughout the swim, the bike, the run, the entire race. So you don't have to have as much here. 
Now, if you decide that you want to put on a shirt, uh, a bike shirt, uh, then that would obviously go here. If you decide you want to wear a running shirt for both the bike and the run, then you would set that here. Putting that on first, obviously, before the helmet makes it a whole lot easier. If you decide to wear the, the running shirt, you should probably uh, make sure that your uh, race number is already pinned to that shirt or uh, that you're using a race belt, which I'll reference in just a minute. Now, for some people, they're not going to wear the specific bike shoes that we've got here. That's totally fine. So for you, you'd have run shoes. So those would be replaced here, socks if you need them, and you would wear running shoes throughout both the bike and the run. So again, it, it depends a little bit on what the equipment you have, um, and all these things are, are not necessarily mandatory. The major key here is make sure that you don't leave two pairs of shoes here um, or two shirts here because uh, when you get to transition two, that second pair, the second pair that you plan on changing into won't be there. Um, so just keep that in mind that whatever you put on here, um, if you want to not wear it on the run, it's got to go in the next transition area. Additionally, if you don't have your repair flat kit on the uh, behind the seat post, um, you can also, if you decide to wear uh, a hydration pack of some kind uh, with your nutrition and water, you could also put the flat uh, you know, pack in there and wear that um, during the bike leg as well. Um, and so that would obviously be in transition, uh, open so it's easy to grab and, and put on. The other thing about the races with two separate transition areas is they're going to give you a, a, a large plastic bag. Uh, and you're going to have numbers on it. So whether it's you writing in large permanent number, your, your numbers, uh, permanent marker, um, or they give you stickers. But basically, when you come out of that swim, you're going to take your goggles, your swim cap, your wetsuit, if you wore one, or speed suit, and you've got to get that off. Uh, a whole other video uh, later on how to do that. But get that wetsuit off, the other swim equipment off, and anything that you want to keep. Um, so probably these... You're going to put all this equipment on, but these towels from transition, throw them in the bag, you'll tie it up, you'll leave it at the transition spot, and then you're off on the bike. And then the volunteers uh, will then take your bag to the finish line, and you'll have all your swim stuff waiting for you uh, when you finish. But chances are, if you don't put something in the bag, it's probably not going to get um, taken to the finish. Okay, so now we're at the next transition area, T2. We've found our spot, and there's a lot less here. You've left your bike back in T1, all the other equipment we talked about. So really what we have here typically is running shoes and socks uh, if you're not already wearing them on the bike, a hat or visor if you choose to wear one, and then on the bottom here is a race belt. So this is the easiest way to put your number on. Uh, it just clips in the back goes around your waist and it's easy to, uh, to throw on and run with. Now, uh, you can use this no matter what you decide to wear, uh, but if you, don't, um, if you don't have one of these, you've got to have your, uh, your race number on during the run. So you've either got to put it on uh, your race shirt um, or um, have it on that shirt that you, you have uh, when you get out of the swim, you put it on, you'll just wear it throughout the bike. Um, and the run, but uh, most people find it seems, just seems to be the easiest way uh, to have it here at C2. Um, that way you can wear whatever shirt you want, you don't have to pin it to it, and uh, you're ready to go with the number. So I put that on the bottom with the hat on top and the shoes. Come in, put your socks and shoes on, throw your hat on, and then grab your race number to put around your waist and you can set out. The other thing that you might have here is perhaps some, some nutrition of some kind, some gels, but you know, the courses have uh, you know, hydration and nutrition, so um, again, that's an optional um, item. Ah, one other thing I almost forgot is because you're setting up two separate transition areas, you've gotta have another towel or a couple of towels because the other ones we had are left in T1, so you've gotta have some uh, to put your stuff on here in T2. Okay, so now you're set up for T1 and T2 in two separate places. 
One other thing I would say about this situation is leave yourself way more time than you think you need. Chances are you'll be driving to T1, setting it up, driving to T2, setting it up, maybe taking a shuttle to the start or some combination thereof. It's just going to take longer than you think. So please leave ample time to get this all set up. And because there are individual differences based on what you decide to wear uh, throughout the race, um, you can always leave a comment um, and I'll be happy to help answer that question as far as how to set up your um, specific area. So I hope that crash course and setting up your T1 and your T2 when they're in two separate places was helpful. If you have other tips or strategies that have worked for you in setting up two separate transition areas, please consider putting a comment um, and engaging and sharing with the community below. I mean, honestly, the best comments typically come from, from you all after you've raced and you're doing it week in and week out, so that can be really helpful. Question of the week, how many tops do you wear throughout a triathlon? One, two, or three? I'll put a couple of links uh, below. Uh, one is for an off-road triathlon checklist so you don't miss anything or forget anything on race day. Uh, if you're interested in any coaching, check out my uh, profile below. I'll give the link for that as well and a couple of great products um, that I typically use in triathlon. So good luck. I'll see you next week. For the next video, hit subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss that one. And until then, I will see you on the trails.